Hey guys, Ratchet Reviews here again with another Transformers video review. And this time I'll be taking a look at the final Decepticon out of the Robots in Disguise line, Scourge. Now, Scourge is quite pot. I believe he is the first ever black repaint of an Optimus Prime to be an evil clone. So this is the this is the start of the Nemesis Prime trend. And he is a repaint of the Transformers G2 Laser Optimus Prime figure, which was essentially Optimus Prime as a laser rod. He had electronics that he had a light up sword. But we'll go ahead and focus on Scourge here. And now uh, there is a couple differences between Scourge and Black Convoy from Japan. Uh, one of the biggest notes notes is uh, the Decepticon insignia. And I forgot to mention this with Runition as well. All of the Decepticons in Robots in Disguise had blacked out upside down G2 Autobot symbols. Now, why they changed that for the Hasbro toys, I'm not sure. Maybe it's just to get the, ba the Decepticon badge on toys again after so long. But, aside from that, Scourge is, unfortunately, uh, compared to, you know, the chrome on mine is a little bad, but... Yeah, unfortunately, there is a couple things that actually make him a little bit worse than the G2 Laser Prime. We'll go ahead and take the trailer off, and we'll set it aside for now because we are not going to look at it for a while. And we'll go ahead and focus on the truck cab. Um, so as you can see, the truck, he does roll pretty well. Uh, he does have these really nice, chunky plastic tires. Not all of them want to hit the ground all at once, though. But, yeah. Um, some really nice black with some teal accents and a translucent red windows, as well as translucent red headlights. A very nice chrome front end. And that's about it for detail-wise. Um, now for uh, size comparison, he's pretty much about where I would expect a semi-truck to be in terms of comparison with the Autobot cars. There's Cyburn and Robot Mode. And then compare him next to Siege Ironhide. So you get a good look of how he compares next to a modern day figure. Now because he does have the trailer included, uh, that does make him the same scale or the same class as uh, Optimus. He is a super class, but he was only, this one was actually a Toys R Us exclusive and the only one that was a Toys R Us exclusive that was featured in the show. I believe the Predacon 3 pack was a Walmart exclusive, but I am not 100% sure and don't want to take the time to pull up the TF Wiki to figure that out. Now, uh, for transformation, what we're going to do here is we're going to start by removing the sword off of the bottom and then Pulling the legs down, folding the feet up, or folding the feet down, and then separating them. And then going to go ahead and stand them up. And that up a little bit, and then take the sides and pull them out to become hands, as well as fold down the shoulders like so, and then take the stomach grill piece and fold that down, and then rotate the head around on that piece, slide it into place, and then turn it around. 
and then close the stomach grill back up. And there we have Scourge in his robot mode with a gamey shoulder. Okay, we'll just put the other one to be the same size as it. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and get a zoom in on that head sculpt. And as you can see, it is very, very Optimus Primey. Well, due to the fact that this is a, um, this is in intentionally done to look like Optimus Prime. Uh, in the show, they made they excused this as uh, scan uh, when Megatron scanned the alternate forms for the protoforms that they captured the Autobot protoforms they captured um, Optimus went to go save the truck driver that was driving what became what was scanned for Scourge's body and then um, Optimus Prime got scanned as well so Scourge became a clone of Optimus Prime from that moment and Now this is the reason why I say G2 Laser Prime was essentially a laser rod, is because they also featured light piping. And this may or may not, like, not very many figures from Robots in Disguise have light piping. So I really do like being able to show this off on Scourge. As you can see there, eyes glow really nice red. So yeah, he is supposed to be a Decepticon clone of Optimus Prime. And he does look that very well. In fact, now it is the l wrong Optimus Prime because this is a repaint of the G2 Laser Optimus Prime and not of the actual Prime that is featured in the show. So there we can do for size comparison. And in this form, Optimus is just a tiny bit taller than Scourge, so. It does have a little bit of a height advantage, but well, they still look pretty good together. Now, weirdly enough, there's factory applied stickers on him. The chest windows, as well as the shoulder pads here, factory applied stickers, but everything else for detail is either paint or molded on from the plastic. I do like these um, shoulder panels being, oh, and I'm probably gonna have to break that screw to get, or break that uh, sticker to get that screw tightened up for his arm, unfortunately. But I do like the um, these cannon things showing up on the shoulders. Now, articulation-wise, this is the other reason why I mentioned that he is like a laser rod, is that this figure has a ton of articulation, especially for its time. So to start off, we do have... Uh, and it's utilized in transformation, the 360 degree head swivel. Shoulders can rotate. Well, I guess due to the mechanics, um, the shoulders can only go forward. They can't do a full 360 degrees, so they can bend 90 degrees forward. But this joint here in the shoulder can bend out as well as a bicep swivel, which cannot go 360 degrees, but it can go 180 degrees. He does have a ratcheting waist swivel and ratcheting hips that can go back that far. 
forward that far and out way farther than it needs to and then ratcheting knees for a 90 degree bend and feet are kind of static but for the sake of transformation you can kind of bend the toe forward but not really any possibility that you can utilize out of that but there's the articulation out of him pretty decently articulated and I think just due to the way the mechanics were on this one the arms do get a little bit restricted and it mostly has to do in the fact with the G2 Laser Optimus Prime. Now the button is still here, but the entire gimmick otherwise is completely castrated out of this figure. Uh, the button is here, and when you would push this button, it would actually light up an LED light in the hand, which would in turn light up the sword. So that was a really nifty gimmick that the G2 Laser Optimus had. And both Takara's uh, Black Convoy and Hasbro's Scourge removed that. I think it was for cutting down on cost. But yeah, again, the button is still there with a spring in it and the battery compartment is essentially welded on so unfortunately we'll never get to see a light up unless you're a heavy heavy customizer there's no way that we would ever be able to see the sword light up on a scourge but that's not all this figure can do go ahead and bring the trailer back in and this is the other thing that was a uh, a change is the trailer itself on the back there's this license plate here that says scourge and then d012 so the d012 stayed uh, that is actually black convoy's uh, designation on the uh, because in transformers toy lines in Japan uh, they're they all have an ID number attached to them. So that is actually scourges or black convoys number and again factory applied sticker but That's pretty much what stayed or that's pretty much the only staying thing now. Yeah, I do have a little bit of like some Adhesive stuck to it, but anyways now the trailer Unfortunately, is not one of the Optimus Prime trailers that forms power armor. This is the one that disappears when the robot transforms and only ever comes out to, be, to form a base every once in a while. So in order to get that started, we're going to go ahead and pull this front section down to kind of get a little bit of a flat center here. And then underneath in this section there is this little trigger right here we're gonna push that and that's going to send this up and knock one of the discs out of place but then also these sections are going to split apart and then over here if I can get my tripod to want to rotate So the disc launcher piece is going to fold up here and rotate forward. And then back here on this side, this gun is actually going to come off and then plug on right here on a ball joint. And this gun can fold down, and this piece can fold down, and then get around on the back. You can get 
this air pump out of the way. And once everything lines up, you can take one of these missiles, which also one of them can store in on this side. And then on this gun, there is five extra missiles hidden back there. But you could take one of these big missiles here. And slot that in. And this is the battle platform for Scourge. And yeah, it's a big battle platform. Now the gun on top here actually does come off. And actually can be a handhold weapon for Scourge. Uh, there's even a little port there. And as a carryover from being the uh, Laser Optimus Prime, it does have the plastic for light piping. So the gun barrels would light up if you were to put that in his hand. So, going to the battle platform now as we start getting a little bit out of the review frame. There's several play features that we can do. Uh, this gun here is actually, as well as being able to come off, is on a turret that does allow for a 360 degree rotation. And then on this gun, each of the five missiles is set off by a button here, which I'm not going to do. But one that we don't get to show off very often, especially on, I haven't showed off before on this channel, I don't think, is a disc launcher. So on this one over here, all you do is you take this dome right here and rotate it until eventually a disc launches out. And then as you rotate it, the next disc on the launcher rotates down, or slides down into place. And finally, the last launcher that we get to show off is the center launcher, this, the air pump launcher. Now this is one that I haven't ever got to show off before because this is the only toy that I have that has one of these in it. So this air pump right here, the idea is you're supposed to give it a hefty thump down. And as you can see, just squeezing it only kind of launches it up a little bit. But if I were able to get over here and give it a nice slam, you can see that it can go pretty far, which I'm trying to be able to do this. Okay, that wasn't the best one I can do, but you get the idea. This thing does have some firepower to it. And unfortunately, just due to how much actually springs out, this thing does become ginormous. And essentially, one of the reasons why I don't like trailers on primes, unless it's gonna form power armor, when it becomes a base like this, it gets really hard to display. Really hard. So, I either have a trailer folded up and off to the side or take up an entire desk just to showcase one figure. So you can see why the trailers aren't necessarily always a good thing.
And also they bring up the markup on figures a hell of a lot more than they need to be. Um, Earthrise Optimus Prime is a good example of selling a Voyager at a leader price point just by adding a trailer. Um, same with Masterpiece, like all three forms of the Masterpiece Optimus Prime. Now, MP01 actually had a variant where it was released separately with the trailer, but the trailer cost still like almost $100 on its own back then. And then MP10, I believe, only ever came with the trailer and never without, so. And then same with MP44. So, that being said, there's not really much else I can say about Scourge. Um, he is a very highly sought out figure, so if you do plan on getting him, or if you do see him for really cheap, I do say jump on him and get him as soon as you can. Um, I don't remember how much I paid for mine second hand, but I got him complete. All of this came complete, and I was so happy to get it secondhand complete for the price I got it. But that being said, um, this one can get a little bit up there on price, so because he is a highly sought out figure, and well, I haven't looked at what the prices are because I've had this figure for at least seven or eight years so or about ten years so I don't know how much it's going for I haven't been bothered to check so that being said all I know is that I when I got this figure at the time I did I got it for a really good price and it was complete the only problem was some of the chrome was scuffed but and that shoulder did get a little bit looser over time on my end. But anyways, overall, I say if you can find one for a good price, get it. Um, now, the differences between the Takara Black Convoy and the Hasbro uh, Scourge are minimal enough to where if you were to get either one, I don't really think it matters unless you're... Uh, unless those little details do mean enough to you but definitely Scourge would be a cheaper alternative to Black Convoy and before I keep rambling on anymore that's about it that's all I have to really say and this has been Ratchet Reviews I hope you guys like this video review and I will see you next time bye